Hi, everyone. This is Li Bai Chen. So I'm the chairman and founder of Summer Atlantic Capital. Uh, Summer Atlantic Capital uh, is an investment management company that headquartered in Hong Kong with uh, our financing arm in China, as well as our marketing subsidiary in the United States. So Summer Atlantic Capital is focusing on bringing uh, companies in the United States and Europe to expand their business and set up joint ventures in China. So uh, today I'm going to uh, introduce briefly about how to expand your business in emerging markets, especially in China through strategic joint ventures. As we can see on this slide, uh, over the last decade, China has been the largest uh, uh, source and uh, the market for lots of global uh, big companies, including some global 500 companies. And uh, uh, the GDP in China is growing significantly from 2010 to 2019, from 6.8 trillion US dollars to 14.33 uh, trillion US dollars. So uh, it's a significant increase of over 235%. Uh, well, at the same time, China's middle class is growing from 44 million to 374 million over the same period. Uh, so uh, we all know that uh, the GDP in China is growing significantly. Well, at the same time, if we take a look at uh, the GDP per capita, it's quite interesting that we will find uh, the GDP per capita indeed is not uh, incre increasing such significantly as compared to the GDP in general because of the population is so huge in China, uh, which means uh, the labor cost, even though the labor cost is actually increasing over time, but it's due uh, at a very low cost as compared to markets back to uh, markets such as Europe, and the United States, which means the cost for any companies uh, to set up a company here is, in, is indeed much lower uh, than having the company in Europe or the United States. So um, while companies are pursuing the expansion in China because of you know, the market here, such a rapid growth, uh, while at the same time, they, all, they sometimes get confused about how to do business here. Uh, it's not a new topic for any company to expand to a foreign market, but China is a little bit different because of the complexity and the culture, cultural difference here. So right now, more and more companies started to find a local partner uh, to solve issues together, such as the legal issues, compliance issues, and the cultural, cultural related issues in markets such as China to efficient to to encounter to deal with and to solve the business issues encountered in the new market more efficiently and at the same time uh, through these joint venture opportunities in china uh, companies uh, such as uh, you know like uh, a mature company back in the u.s a technology company they want to uh, introduce their product in China or launch their product in China, they get not only the, the partner in China, but also get more capital access in China and more distribution at the same time. So there are lots of advantages um, by using this approach as we, um, we can easily understand. So why should companies choose joint ventures rather than any other approaches in terms of global expansions? Well, uh, it's not just about China, it's about uh, you know, a company's strategic alien, strategic goal and its vision and its you know, like business goals, where it's going to uh, go and uh, what's their approach going to be and uh, uh, where do they want to achieve in many years from now. So uh, right now, it's quite interesting that if we take a look at the global Fortune 500 companies, they enter China mostly through joint venture partnerships. Companies such as technology giants, as we all know, such as Amazon, Tesla, Abbott, and HP, they all gained significant growth through those joint venture approaches. And uh, 
they didn't really just uh, start it now. They started like more than 20 years ago and some started from 10 years ago and it's keep, keep going, keep going and keep going to today. So joint venture by all means is not a new approach. It's indeed an old path for any international companies to expand a business into markets such as China. So other benefits, which are very obvious to understand as well, such as lowering the cost uh, of manufacturing and increase uh, profit margins in distributions and uh, also receive the benefits of um, a secondary public listing. Uh, this is something very interesting. I want to expand a little bit as well, because uh, for example, a company might get already listed in a stock exchange such as NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange. Uh, well, they make a market expansions in markets such as China, if they uh, satisfy all the, uh, you know, like the terms and the requirements and the standards of the uh, exchange, public exchange in markets such as China or Hong Kong, they can have their subsidiary or giant venture get listed here as well to raise additional capital without diluting the call shareholders of the primary listing in, in the country of the primary, uh, you know, like headquarter. So this way companies indeed get more uh, capital access at the same time um, they have more shareholders to uh, build their business up together. So there are a lot of uh, benefits in this approach. So I want to walk you through a very interesting chart. So uh, if we take a look at this chart, um, it says companies that going along companies going through MIA and companies uh, going to access the new market through joint ventures. So we saw that, um, so the first the driver is the, the developing strategic business relationship, second driver is low market familiarity, and the third driver is adjusting to changing market conditions. It's very interesting that uh, uh, on the right hand side is the joint venture me uh, measurements. So all those different measurements shows up very high by a joint venture opportunities, which we can see the advantage uh, of going to a new market through joint venture is very significant as compared to the other two uh, approach. So that's why that explains why there are barely companies going to a new market alone because uh, the risk is very high and at the same time, it's, it's less efficient, cost more capital, and uh, it takes longer, much longer time. So let's move the, to the next slide. Joint venture opportunities are proved to be successful because it has multiple uh, advantages and we, uh, as we discussed before, such as the regulatory guidance, such as government approvals, uh, expansion capital, sales and distributions, intellectual property protection, manufacturing and production, licensing and staffing. And there are more benefits rather than that, but I'm not going to list all the benefits on these slides because it's really a case by case situation. Uh, based on the companies, you know, like uh, the business model, uh, the maturity level of the company and the product level, uh, how mature the product is, if the product is mature enough to go to a new market or it's still under its R&D stage. So there are lots of, you know, like factors related to, uh, you know, how you evaluate your business decision because at the end of the day, doing a joint venture in a new market such as China is really a strategic decision rather than just uh, expanding a sales, sales arm in a new market or sell your market in a new uh, in internationally. So let's move to the next slide. If we take a look at the survival rate of the joint ventures in China, it's very interesting as well. Um, Let's let's skip the joint ventures for one second for now. Uh, let's just, uh, I didn't really put this slide, the, the slide I'm going to referring to, to our presentation today, but I'm going to uh, introduce that briefly. It's 
uh, the survival rate of a startup in any country. So um, we all know that from year zero, when you first started out your business to year three, it's actually, you know, more than 75% of the companies died during this period. And indeed, um, for companies that goes beyond three years, they started to, you know, become more, you know, generating revenue and become more successful. But if we take a look at the joint ventures of our rate in China, it's very interesting. Indeed, the survival rate of joint ventures in China are very, very high. So if we take a look at this chart uh, on the left-hand side, it indicates that um, so over 90% of the joint ventures are still in operation in less than 15 years. And uh, they are uh, close to 70% of the joint ventures are still survive after 25 years, which means this rate is much higher. The survival rate of joint ventures is much higher than building a new company in China by by your own. And I want to uh, mention another very interesting statistic, a statistic here as well, uh, is the survival rate of companies in China. So companies in China, indeed, you know, like companies started by Chinese founders, uh, you know, like 100% Chinese companies, they indeed, uh, stay much less, they, they, they stay alive much less than companies in the United States or in Europe. This is a very interesting phenomenon because, uh, because of the special uh, economic situation or circumstance in China, because the GDP and the economy is developing so fast. There are lots of fast companies in China, uh, you know, occurred in the past uh, 20 to 30 years. Uh, those companies stayed for only, you know, very, their, their life, their life cycle is very short. They only survive for, you know, like about um, like one to three years and some is even less than one year. And if we take a look at the survival rate of startups in China, especially technology startups in China, more than 99% of the technology startup in China failed. Why I mention this? Because if we compare those survival rate to the survival rate of joint ventures in China, you will find the joint ventures survival rate in China is not just a high. It's like a magic. It's very significant. It's like a miracle. It's extremely high, which means this approach is proved to be a successful approach and way to tackle the new market, especially in China. So let's take another look at some interesting statistics about the joint ventures in China. Close to 70% of joint ventures are still operating after 25 years. According to the National Bureau of Statistics in China, since 2010, roughly 40% of foreign funded capital into China has come where joint ventures. And the National Bureau of Economic Research states that joint ventures are about 30% more productive than firms that expand into China without a joint venture. According to CIA's fact book, China's GDP overtook the US in 2019 when adjusted for purchasing power parity. China's PPP adjusted GDP in 2019 was above 23 trillion, while the US was while the United States was over 19 trillion. Well, those are just some data for us to uh, understand the Chinese market a little bit better. Well, I mentioned earlier that the GDP per capita uh, in the U.S. is still much higher than China, which means it's actually a good opportunity uh, in China to leverage the benefits uh, of the low cost of manufacturing in China. Well, at the same time, it, it indicates that the market in China is still growing. Uh, uh, at the recent 
st uh, statistic shows that because of the global COVID-19 issue, the global virus issue, uh, the economy was slowing down uh, globally. And uh, China last year in 2020, uh, in 2020, the GDP is slowing down significantly as well. Uh, but uh, starting from the end of this year, the end of last year and the beginning of this year, the GDP in China started to picking up again, uh, which means uh, the economy started to become more active. And right now, and especially under the global COVID-19 situation, from the supply chain perspective, it's quite interesting to for uh, companies, especially companies that are looking to have some global landscape to have uh, some new approach towards the Chinese market as well. So uh, when we are going to move to the next slide, I want to mention another interesting point is about uh, how to do joint ventures in China. We all know there are lots of uh, advantage to do a joint venture in China, but how to do it? Well, it's similar to uh, you know, like uh, accessing any new market first. You want to talk to a very professional agency or professional um, firm that understand the Chinese market about their approach and to understand the market better. So first you need to do your own research and you need to talk to a professional firm about uh, uh, the feasibility to evaluate if your business is good for the Chinese market or not. If your business is not good to expand um, to markets such as China, or maybe your business is not good to in, uh, expand internationally at this moment, you probably don't want to take the risk because even if uh, there are lots of benefits and advantage of building a joint ventures, there are still risks associated with any business expansions and initiatives. So that's something I want to mention. So the idea, if your business the idea is if your business, let's assume your business satisfy all the key points and your business is ready and it's good to evaluate, uh, to expand to a new market such as China. So what would be your ideal partner when you are doing the business expansion into markets such as China? I would say that from our experience, the ideal partner must have the capabilities to perform all critical operations, the goals, the trustworthiness, transparency, such as they are very good friends with you. They understand your business language. They understand your logic. You under they understand your business. And at the same time, they have the capability to run the market feasibility for you, while at the same time, uh, they can run the necessary management operations and the distributions, or at least build up all those team members for you. So this is very important to successfully, uh, for an ideal uh, joint venture partner. At, this, at the same time, you want to find uh, a partner that uh, you trust, that you guys understand each other, which means the communication will be more efficient. So the figures on the right-hand side is some Atlantic's approach, is our approach towards finding a joint venture partner for our companies. First, we will do an evaluation towards their company to figure out if they have the knowledge or resources such as the abilities to satisfy government regulations, since you know markets such as China is very uh, policy driven. It's like a political economics context, which means uh, the ability to satisfy government regulations is extremely important to access at the bottom line. At the same time, we will evaluate if they have their own regulatory permits, license, and uh, patents. And um, we will say they are very connected to government, non government level organizations. Uh, and if your company, that really for the next term is really depends on if your company's, your company's sector and industry. 
for example, if your company is in the natural resources sector, they need to have access to you know raw materials. Uh, and if your company has products that needs to be produced and manufactured in China, they need to have access to uh, you know the factories, the products, the services, all the technology. And they need to have the knowledge base about the local markets, so they know uh, they can bring value to your company when you are expanding the market into China. At the same time, they have to have some manager labor skills as well, so that you you can make sure the team, the new operating team in China, is going to be a very um, high caliber and successful team. So. Let's move to the next slide. So on this slide, we can see the different layers, the six layers of the corporate governance that Summer Atlantic usually do when we are evaluating a joint venture. So first, we do a joint venture agreement that outlines the duties and responsibilities of each party within the joint venture. And then we move to the shareholder committee stage. Uh, after the shareholder committee uh, approves, understand the business and the investment plan, along with annual budget and profit distribution, uh, we'll move to the board of directors to make the final decision. And then we will set up the board, uh, the sub subcommittees under the board. But this is something that not necessarily necessarily needs to happen. It really depends on uh, the nature of the business. And then we go to the operating management committee to draft the joint ventures official business plan uh, with the goals, not just the in mid and long term, but also we will consider the short term goals as well. And uh, then we move to the final stage, which is approval metrics. So by expanding into China through joint venture partnerships, provide access for companies to hundreds of millions of additional customers, while potentially allowing your business to expand profit margins and a quicker path to profitability. And at the same time, overall improve the valuation of the business itself as well. By, by doing the joint venture approach in China, the company benefits from a minimal investment and the right partner to provide the local experience. Joint venture opportunities are proven to be the most successful and effective way of entering new markets such as China. So our company, Summer Atlantic, uh, we usually provide the guidance and know-how alongside with our due diligence and reach government framework. We help the companies navigate through all the challenges and building a successful operational structure in new markets such as China and developing long-term sustainable source of profits while expanding into one of the world's largest and fastest growing economies. So let's move to the next slide. We all know right now we understand the benefits, advantage, and how to do the initial market assessment towards building up a joint venture in China. Then you're probably going to ask, is my company or my product good for the Chinese market? Oh, is my, well, I think let's go back to the original question. Uh, think about your business at this moment, uh, where you are, which stage are you currently in about your company and your product? Are you ready to expand internationally? Or right now it's, you know, it's actually much better for you to focus in your local market. So first, I think if you are going to make this evaluation first, that you probably want to ask yourself, which stage is your company or your product currently in? What's your financial, uh, you know, like capabilities, your company's financial capabilities, and what's your goal? And the goals, if we break down the goals, it will, um, you will encounter another question. 
among all the different business goals, what matters most for you? These will, those questions will help you evaluate if your company is good to expand internationally at this moment or not. And then if your company, if the answer is yes, if your company is ready to expand internationally, then you want to ask yourself another question. Is my company, if I'm, my company is going to expand internationally, which market should I start first? Do, do I have to my, does my company already have lots of access to workers, uh, markets in different parts of the world? If yes, should I consider China? Should I consider China now or should I consider China later? Those are all strategic questions that a company's founder or management team should consider. But from our experience and my own experience after staying you know, many years in China, I've seen that um, for the Chinese market, there are lots of you know, like advantage through joint ventures, but by all means itself, the Chinese market itself will bring lots of, you know, like the customers, sales, capital, and more diversity towards uh, an international company. Well, at the same time, if this company uh, is evaluating if their product or company is mature enough to come to the Chinese market. I would say that if your company is too, uh, you know, like early stage or your product still under the R&D research and development stage, you probably for under most, uh, uh, you know, like situations, I would say uh, the percentage is around, you know, more than 85 percentage of the time. If your product is still under the R&D stage, you probably want to finalize your R&D first and get some, you know, like commercial roadmaps for your product in your local market first, and then move to the next stage, such as China. Well, if you want to expand in China or another market, that's a strategic decision as well. Uh, depends on, well, if your company is going to involve, you know, if, if your product so first, let's assume your product is mature enough for the Chinese market. And then you want to expand your new product to, uh, to the market in China. Then the next thing you want to evaluate if, is this market, is this product, is my product, the good product or the right product for the market in China? Which, which means if, if the answer is yes, your product can sell well in China, you will consider how should I do it? So that's the basic points, I think, for any company, if you want to expand, uh, expand internationally, or you have a particular interest in markets such as China, you want to ask yourself first, and then make the decision, I'll export to the next stage. And then when you are actually making the decision to expand market in China, the next question I will suggest you yourself to ask yourself is, what's your financial goal? When you are expanding into China, do you want to get the most benefits from the market by, you know, leveraging the customer base here or lowering your manufacturing cost, or you want to, uh, you know, gain some capital investment to your joint ventures in China? What's your goal? Or you want to have all of those uh, goals solved at the same time. It's okay if the answer is yes, but you really need to figure out what you really want to do. And then find a right partner to get you through this process. And this is going to be a most efficient way to access a new market. And that's it. Uh, do you have any questions 